Hi folks, this is the Psy Top Airflow Vaporizer, or the TAF for short, and isn't it nice? Now, it's hard not to be impressed by the way this is all put together. Every joint is a nice sliding fit, and the whole thing really has a lovely quality feel to it, right down to the motif on the body. It came from a supplier called Recommended Vape Supplies, and it was £40, including postage. So it's not particularly cheap, considering that it was more expensive than the mod box itself, and around double the cost of the Vandy Vape RDA. And of course it does a similar job to the RDA, in that it screws onto a power source, in other words a mod box, and takes electrical current to create heat and vaporise the spice. Unlike the RDA though, the TAF comes with its own proprietary heating hardware, which comprises a miniature titanium bucket into which the spice is loaded, and a small donut shaped ceramic heater, which sits below it. I'm guessing that the term top airflow refers to the way in which the air is sucked in through these top vents here and directed down into the body. It does actually have adjustable bottom vents as well, but with the arrangement we have here, these are non-functional because they're actually blocked off by the heater and the bucket. And the way in which the air is directed down into the body to maximise the flow in and out of the bucket is quite ingenious, and I'll show you that with a diagram. So here's a representation, but it's not quite to scale and it doesn't represent the exact layout, but it's good for showing the principle of what's going on. So during a toke, we have our spice sitting here in the bucket and being heated by the donut heater below. On taking a toke, the air, and hopefully the vapour, is drawn up and out of the main chamber, through this hole here, into the mouthpiece, which in reality is one of four holes in the cap. And in fact, there they are. The outflow here creates a suction in the chamber, and air rushes in via the top vents and down through an internal airflow tube, which itself is screwed into the cap. And the airflow tube is this thing here. This little thing here. The idea with this arrangement, I guess, is to maximise airflow in the bucket and maximise vapour production. On the subject of the airflow tube, the TAF was actually delivered with a free little mysterious thingy-majig, which turns out it uh, replaces the existing air tube and it's called an upgrade, designed to direct air into the corners of the bucket where, they say, the concentrate naturally moves to. So, let's put that on. We take the existing one off, screw the new thing on. So there's the upgraded air tube. If we unscrew and remove the titanium bucket, we can remove the ceramic heater, and there it is. The heating coil does have a specified TCR value, so it can make use of the mod box's temperature control function. However, according to the recommended vape supply website, the TCR can be anywhere between 260 and 315, which is an unhelpfully large range. And also a bit confusing is that the small instruction sheet that comes with it suggests using nickel in temperature control mode, but the TCR value for that comes out at a whopping 690. Several Redditors seem to be recommending a TCR of 240, and that really does sound like a sensible option. But because of the wide range of specified TCR values, actual temperatures of anywhere between 157.1 and 186.2 degrees centigrade would be present for a desired temperature setting of 200 degrees centigrade. I can show the maths for these figures in the description if you're interested, but the point here is that because of the puzzlingly wide range of possible TCRs, some experimentation is going to be inevitable, and starting off with low settings for TCR and temperatures is well advisable, say 170 degrees centigrade and a TCR value of 220, and working up from there to be safe. Another reason to be careful with these heating coils is they have a maximum continuous power rating of 23 watts and a recommended maximum wattage on TCR of 30. And also on the uh, RVS website it states, please note all coils eventually need replacing and also they tend to last for months with care and proper use. So not particularly confidence inspiring words and I'm kind of wondering if these coils perhaps are a bit fragile. I mean, I certainly hope not, because at £12 each, they're nearly a third the cost of the whole vaporizer, and compare that with a roll of 5 foot mesh for just under £4 that I bought, I could make over 40 mesh coils for the direct e-mesh at a price of less than 10 pence each. Also, it's possible that a coil failure might not result at a total burnout, 
I mean, I was looking at one post where a Redditor was complaining that his taff had stopped vaporising properly, despite the mod box display appearing pretty normal. So in the light of this, I couldn't help wondering if they're, maybe the cores are prone to internal delamination, or maybe some other internal nasty, which reduces the heat transfer capability. I mean, who knows? But I certainly won't be doing a red heat burn-off <laughs> cycle for these when the cores are brand new. Another thing I'm not too keen on is the fact that this mouthpiece is an understandard size. I wanted to fit an extension and was expecting an 810 fitting, which would be about 12.5mm outside diameter. But in actual fact it's about 15.3mm, and a search on the supplier's website, Google, and also I put a question on Reddit, didn't really get any success at all. After a play around in the garage, I finally came up with these bad boys, which are made from standard 15 and 10mm domestic plumbing fittings with PTFE tape wrapped around, just to seal the end gap. And the tape has the merest smear of super glue over one end, and they really do fit quite well, and they do the job okay as well. But the point is, do you really want to be playing around with things like this when you've just spent £40 on a vaporizer? And bearing in mind, obviously, not everybody has a garage full of plumbing bits to play with. Another disappointment is the heat up times, which I'll demonstrate with a side by side comparison clip. On the left is the direct e mesh, and on the right, the TAF. I'll be showing a full 10 second fire cycle, so keep your eye on the e mesh to the left because when I press the fire button, the heat up's pretty quick and it's easy to miss. So, 3, 2, 1, fire, and you can see the direct e mesh is already heated up and ready to go. My TAF is now ready after about 4.5 seconds. On the TAF, the second or so between the coil heated and the ready flag is the wattage stabilising, which appears to be the time lag for the coil's heat to fully conduct into the inside of the bucket. So, putting those figures from the mod box display on a graph, the point is we don't have the near instantaneous press and go availability on the TAF that makes the direct email so simple and effective. The extra heat up delay introduces the need for a bit of a technique to be developed, which appears to have to take this plus several other factors into account. First of these is a suspected temperature overshoot on the initial heat up. I mean the readings show a gradual increase up to the desired temperature. But in practice I strongly suspect that this temperature is overshooting before it reaches a stable value and overshooting quite uh, significantly as well. It's something that's a bit difficult to prove, but from the actual vaping experience, which I'll describe in a while, it feels exactly like it. If I'm right about the overshoot, I guess you could pulse this fire button at start-up, or maybe reduce the maximum wattage to slow down the initial heat-up, either of which would reduce any overshoot. Uh, and this would help solve another potential fly in the ointment, which is that many mod boxes have a 10 second limit to the fire length. But, assuming you can succeed with the timing, the heat up correctly, and handle any possible temperature overshoots, there are some other hurdles to overcome as well. So you see what I mean about you might need to adopt your own sort of technique for handling it properly. Of course the TAF has a really small heater, and the hole in the middle certainly doesn't help. But if you take the thickness of the ceramic walls into account, which must apply on the heater itself as well, then this reduces the surface area even more. But at least it does appear to make gun contact with the titanium bucket. I smeared a bit of my wife's lipstick on the bottom of this and screwed this in, and that was the result. I suspect that the combination of a fairly small heater and this particular shape of bucket, which is quite narrow and tall, isn't the ideal setup for efficient vapour production. I mean, I know we have that upgraded airflow tube, but in practice it doesn't really seem to make up for these issues, whatever inhale strength is applied. Plus, if the bucket isn't exactly vertical in use, then the spice tends to run into a little pool at the edge, not only reducing its surface area with the air around it even more, but also being in less contact with the hot bucket base. So, with all this in mind, how did I get on with vaping it? Well, I tried it about ten times over three nights and found it to be pretty much impossible to get a good reliable vape. And this was despite testing out all sorts of settings and techniques. First time was with the TCR set to 240 and temperature 180 degrees centigrade, which was broadly in line with the Redditor's recommendations that I'd seen. After heat up on this first time, I heard a very brief but fierce bubbling sound, just like the spice was boiling madly. But then it silenced and I inhaled... But not much vapour seemed to come out, so I took another toke and the effect was quite weak and it just felt a bit trippy for a few minutes. There were certainly no visuals, whether they were open or closed eye. And looking at the bucket afterwards, the result was this. So it's kind of showing evidence of overheating and 
You know, possibly that temperature overshoot, bearing in mind the brief bubbling sound. Of course, it's not easy to prove, but it seems likely. So I left it an hour, tried again, but this time with 25 milligrams. Same TCR, but lower temperature of 170. And this time, in an effort to give the airflow upgrade tube a bit more of a chance, I made a much sharper inhale and instantly felt a lot of uncomfortable heat in my lungs. And at this time, there was no this bubbling sound. Uh, and the heat in my lungs was really quite painful. And just as I thought I was about to cough, some visuals began to appear, which became... Some of the most colourful I've ever seen before. They were absolutely beautiful. You know, they came quite intense. So I was beginning to think that at last I'd got the technique. But for the rest of that night, plus the next two, I had more of those issues, either with almost complete lack of vapour, or that fierce boiling and burnt spice. And this is despite trying all kinds of temperature settings, techniques, TCRs, you name it. By the end of the third night, I decided I'd wasted enough spice on this thing. And instead screwed on my direct TMS setup, loading it with about 18 milligrams. Result was an instant blast into the farthest reaches of DMT land. So, I've got to be honest with you, I doubt that the TAF will ever be screwed onto my mod box again. But are there any advantages to it? Well, in my mind, there's nothing that makes up for its shortcomings. But if I had to find something positive to say, well, we've already spoken about the build quality, and I wish all kit was as built as nicely as this. It's got good manufacturer support as well, although sometimes you wonder whether the marketing influences this. It's relatively easy to load the spice. If you can master the vaping technique, then I don't know, I couldn't do it, but it might prove to be a useful device in some ways. But from my experience, there's no way I'd recommend it. It's been really interesting testing it, and I've learned lots about what makes a good and a bad vaporizer. But to me, it's what makes the direct e-mesh method seem even better than I already knew it was. And anybody who doubts the efficiency of the direct e-mesh would be wise to take the matter up with Rob from Adeptus Psychonautica. In fact, I've, I've got him here, he's just come through the door. Rob, can you just give us a quick brief on what you think of the direct e-mesh? It definitely works. <laughs> yes. And let's not forget that the TAF was actually designed as a cannabis concentrate atomizer, not DMT. So we are testing it for a purpose it was never designed for. And of course, just because I couldn't master it doesn't make it a failure for everybody. What I intend to do with this now is give it away to a psychonaut friend of mine and invite him to do a second opinion video. And if that comes to pass, then hopefully he'll release his own version of this video. And it's probably worth mentioning as well, and I've said this before, that to me, it doesn't really matter. Not one single jot what vape tool you're using. If it works for you and you're bringing the benefits of this incredible medicine into your daily life, then as far as I'm concerned, you're a valued member of the amazing community that we've got. And I'm just proud to have every single one of you as a friend. And let's keep up the great spirit and the good work. Hope you found the video of interest, folks. Many thanks for watching. Maximum respect. And I'll catch you again very soon. Bye-bye.